All right, so we are now moving into our new topics. We just finished up everything for the first six weeks. So these next two videos that I'm going to do are actually our new material for the new six weeks, but we do need to get started on it already. I have noticed that we haven't really been taking notes, don't know how to take notes, aren't keeping up with it. You should have a spiral notebook that you're taking all of your notes for geometry in. From now on, the videos I'm going to do, I'm going to be taking them on a Nova paper like it shows on the screen right now. So you know what all to write down, how to write it, what it should look like in your notebook. So you need to turn to a new page wherever it is. And the title for your notes today is Segment Edition Postulate. So I'm going to go ahead and write it so you can see. Remember, I'm going to be writing just like you should in your notebook. We're actually going to break it into two sections. The first video is segment edition postulate, and this is just with numbers. The second video you're going to watch is actually going to be segment edition postulate, but with algebra. So the next thing you're going to write is kind of just what this whole segment edition postulate is about. It says if a point is between two endpoints of a segment, then the sum of the parts is equal to the total length of the segment. You're probably like, I don't even know what that means. Go ahead and just write it as it is, and we're going to walk through some visuals, and I'm going to show you what this statement actually means. So this says that there is a segment that has two endpoints. So I'm just going to draw a segment, and that there's a point between those two. doesn't matter where. And I'm going to label each of these. Remember, we have points, and if we label them, we label them in capital letters. So I'm just going to go in order and do A, B, and C. There are a few things you do need to know about these points. You first need to know that points A, B, and C are collinear. Remember that means that they can be connected by the same line. And then you need to know, of course, that point B is between A and C. So it's between A and C on segment AC. So this is just like extra information, facts that you need to know about this segment. So basically what that statement is saying is that let's say this ABC, this segment is a piece of string and I cut that string where B is. I would have one part, which would be from A to B. So we're just gonna call that a part. Then I would have another part from B to C. Now, if I was to take those two parts and put them back together, this would give me the whole from A to C. So what your segment addition postulate says basically is that if you have a part plus another part and we add it together, it'll equal the whole segment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change like part and whole and I'm going to change it into terms of the letters of the points that we have. So remember that first part that we had was A, B, plus that second part was from B to C. That was if I cut the string, the imaginary string. Now if I put them back together, it would equal the whole that goes from A all the way to C. So for this specific example, I have A, B, and C. Your segment addition postulate is A, B plus B, C equals A, C. So this right here is your segment addition postulate. Sometimes we will abbreviate it, and I usually just call it SAP, um, just because it is a mouthful. So just to make sure you're comfortable with the whole part plus part equals whole, I want you to sketch the segment and write the segment addition postulate for each example below. We're going to do two of them with different letters. So your first example says Q is between P and K on segment PK. So first, you should always draw your segment. So I tell you it is segment PK. So that tells me it starts at P, it goes to K. And then I also tell you point Q is somewhere between them. So I'm just going to pick a spot between the two, and that's where Q is going to go. Now remember, for the segment addition postulate, it is part plus part equals whole. So my first part, if I was to cut at Q, is from P to Q. So I have PQ plus my second part would be from Q to K. So it would be PQ plus QK is equal to, 
Now we need the whole, the entire segment. So if I take PQ and I add it to QK, I end up with the whole segment of PK. So this second example, I actually want you to go ahead and try on your own. It says B is between L and W on segment LW. So remember first, like in example one, you want to draw that segment. And then you want to go ahead and write that segment addition postulate. Remember, part plus part equals whole. So there is a question that's going to pop up, and it's going to ask you which of the following are the correct, seg or is the correct segment addition postulate. So these next examples, I'm actually going to give you some, either the parts, the whole um, of the segments, and I want you to find the missing information. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So in example one, I tell you, I drew the segment for you already. I give you A, B, C. I tell you that A, B is equal to eight and B, C is equal to four. So we always want to write our segment addition postulate first. So looking here, remember it's part plus part. So my first part is from A to B, plus my second part is from B to C. And remember that is equal to the whole segment from A to C. So I'm literally just gonna take that information that I already know, plug it in, and I'm gonna solve for whatever is missing. So I know that AB was given to me, and it's given to me as eight. Plus, I know too that BC is four. That was also given to me in the problem. And it is equal to, I was not given AC, so AC is actually what I'm looking for. Now this is pretty simple. All you have to do is do eight plus four and it gives you 12. So I know for number one that AC is equal to 12. I was given the two parts and I had to find the whole. So example two, again, I already have that segment drawn for you. Remember with geometry, you cannot trust your pictures. So just because it looks like the two parts are equal doesn't necessarily mean that. I tell you that NS is equal to six and MS is equal to 13. So remember, our first step is to write that segment addition postulate. So go ahead and do that now. Hopefully you chose the segment addition postulate to be MN, which is the first part, plus NS, the second part, is equal to the whole of MS. So remember now, at this point, I want to fill in any information I know. I was not given MN, so this is actually just going to stay m n plus i was given the value for n s i told you n s is equal to six and that's going to be equal to i did give you the value for m s which is 13. so we do want to think about this kind of like solving equations m n is like my x i want to get it all by itself because i need to know what it's equal to so what else is over on the left side with m n it's the plus six so in order to move it to the other side I need to do the opposite. I need to subtract 6. When I do that, on the left, my plus 6 and minus 6 cancel out. And I'm just left with m n is equal to 13 minus 6 gives me 7. So this was a problem where I gave you n s, which was a part. I gave you m s, which was the whole. And we had to find the other part, which was m n. And we found that to be 7. All right, so example three, I tell you that PR is equal to 15, PQ is equal to 12, and I drew the segment for you. So first thing, like always, you need to go ahead and figure out what your segment addition postulate is. So go ahead and do that now. When you do the segment addition postulate or write it out for this example, you should have gotten that PQ plus QR is equal to PR. So I want you to go ahead and fill in the missing information. A question is going to pop up and ask which part of the segment or which piece of the segment is missing. You should have identified that QR is the missing piece. It is one of the parts. So go ahead and do your steps to solve for QR. And then I will ask a question asking what you got as the length of QR. So this whole time I've told you, you know, there's that point that comes between the two endpoints. And when I draw it, I just kind of draw it in the middle just for a visual. Well, we do have something when the point 
lands exactly in the middle. And that is called a segment bisector. And you need to associate a bisected segment with the midpoint. So just like I kind of briefly touched on, you need to know that a segment is bisected by the midpoint. Really important to know, though, is that midpoint, of course, like the name kind of says, is exactly in the middle. So that means that our segment is cut in half. So make sure you associate bisected with midpoint, with middle, and cut in half. So if I have a segment, again, I have A, B, and C, and it's bisected by B. So point B bisects segment AC. That just means from A to B is the same length as B to C. So AB is equal to BC. Whatever AB is, BC is. Whatever BC is, AB is. So we still have our segment addition postulate. So AB plus BC equals AC. But if you want, you can use part plus part equals whole still. But I just told you that AB and BC are the same. So another way we can write it is 2 times whatever the part is. So if it's AB, if it's BC, because remember they're the same is equal to the whole. If you can remember that with a regular segment addition postulate, it's part plus part equals whole, and that for a bisected one, it's two times the part equals the whole, it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Now remember, if you can't remember that, that's fine. Part plus part equals whole will always work too. So we're going to do some examples with numbers, and I'm going to ask you again to find the missing information. But remember, these examples are bisected segments. So here, I tell you that point B bisects AC. So we want to draw that first. So I have segment AC that is then bisected, cut in half, right in the middle is point B. I tell you that all the way from A to C is 12. So we're going to go ahead and do the 2 times the part equals the whole. Now, you need to look and see 12, is that the part or one of the parts, or is it the whole? Since it goes all the way from A to C, you should know that it is the whole. So 2 times the part is equal to, we know the entire segment is 12. Now, in order to get the part by itself or solve for the part, I'm actually just going to divide both sides by 2. My 2's cancel out, and I'm just left with the word part. If you want to put x in place of part, you're welcome to do that too. If you can just think about this in your head, that's cool as well. And then 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. What this says is that one of the parts from A to B is equal to 6. But since the segment is bisected and the parts are equal, I also know that from B to C is 6 as well. So example 2, I tell you that point M bisects PW, and I tell you that PM is equal to 11. So again, we're going to go ahead and draw that segment. So you have PW, and I tell you that M bisects it, so it's in the middle. Now I'm going to go ahead and label the information I have. I know that P to M is 11. But since this is a bisected segment, you know, I know that both parts are the same. So what is MW as well? You should know since they are equal that MW is also 11. So there are two options. I'm going to show you both ways. If you're still doing part plus part equals whole, that is fine. You know the first part is 11 plus the second part is 11, and we want to know the whole. So 11 plus 11 gives you 22, which is equal to the whole segment. And remember that whole segment, if we wanted to name it, it is PW. So because it is a bisected segment, remember you can also do 2 times the part 
equals the whole. So 2 times one of the parts, they're the same, it doesn't matter. 11 is equal to the whole. 2 times 11 again gives you 22. And just like on the first part, I know that the whole is PW, so PW is equal to 22. These videos are long. I know it's just new information and it's kind of hard to get it to you online. Um, but this is the end of this video. There are no practice problems or anything. There will be practice on this though posted on Wednesday. So please make sure you take your notes for this video of numbers. You also need to do the second video that deals with algebra.